Sure. Uh, so the analogy that I often use um, is that things like covered coins are um, kind of pocket calculator protocols. So they're protocols that do one thing and they try to do one thing well. A master coin is like a Swiss army knife protocol. So it has some larger set of things that you can do with it, but it's still a limited list of features. But Ethereum is uh, like a smartphone, right? It contains a programming language and a uh, kind of processor that can basically run code that where that code can make it do complicated things. And because it has that ability to run general purpose code, you know, you can build apps and you can uh, kind of download apps that run on your smartphone, right? And in the same way, you can create a smart contract um, where that smart contract is a piece of code, publish that code to the Ethereum blockchain, and that lets you create applications where those applications uh, can basically run and run whatever their kind of code or, what, or their business logic is uh, on top of the Ethereum ecosystem. So it's much more powerful that way. your homework, Larry? Just ask him about the car, man. Is this yours, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Is that your car out front? Is this your homework, Larry? We, we know it's his f***ing homework. Where's the f***ing money, you little brat? Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where we talk about all things crypto all the time. My name is Johnny. Thanks for dropping in, and let's go ahead and get started. Well, as you guys are aware, volatility has been on the low end this December. Uh, and as we head towards 21, though, the last two weeks look like they are gearing up for something really, really exciting and interesting for the cryptocurrency market as a whole. Now, we've got stimulus talks underway as good old Uncle Bernie tries to hook the American people up with another $1,200 stimulus check. We know that those will help boost the retail market in crypto. Um, and we have just institutional investment skyrocketing. And it has been doing this the entire year. Grayscale is at it again, um, announcing that they have just acquired another $74 million worth of Ethereum adding to their $1.6 billion total. Now, this kind of brings me into the point of today's video, and I really just want to talk to you guys a bit about the bullish case for Ethereum heading into 2021. Now, Ethereum has actually been really killing it this year. It is up over 554% on the year. And it's really taken a back seat to Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin has been really bullish, but it's taken a back seat. This is 554%. This is nothing to laugh at. You know, the world wants crypto, guys, and Grayscale absolutely knows it. That's why they are buying up so much of it. Now, they're a seven year old digital assets manager, and they are also a US business. Uh, security software company. Um, you know, they've been making these announcements and it says here that as of April, they had bought over 50% of the total available Ethereum supply from the miners. So that is just absolutely incredible. I mean, they see this opportunity and the value proposition that is Ethereum and it's, you know, it's only going to get much, 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 much more bullish. And in the wake of this, we are now seeing Ethereum only portfolios. I mean, this isn't new to a lot of you, but some of you like really. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible. So earlier this month, uh, Michael Sunshine, the GM of Grayscale, said there was an increasing number of investors who are Ethereum only, hinting towards growing conviction around Ethereum as an asset class in a phone interview with Bloomberg, he said that over the course of 2020, they are seeing a new group of investors who are Ethereum first, 
and in some cases, Ethereum only. Like Bitcoin, the smart contracting platform that is Ethereum is experiencing a first mover advantage over other digital assets like Polkadot and Cardano. Um, and it's the dominant crypto in its category. It's the smart contracting capacity of Ethereum that just brings this broad spectrum of functionality to the cryptocurrency market. Um, and this includes DeFi. Now, DeFi has over $14.9 billion locked in total value. This is incredible considering if you look to March of this year, it was under $1 billion. Now, with DeFi, with Ethereum, you know, as a smart contracting uh, network in itself, uh, it is set to really take over in terms of market cap as the number one cryptocurrency in the world. Now, Economist Rao Paul, he says that Ethereum, you know, its probable adoption is programmable money, which is already in route. It's already happening. Uh, will make it or we will see it uh, become the largest cryptocurrency by market cap, overtaking Bitcoin, he says, sometime within the next 10 years. Uh, but it could definitely happen sooner. And he said at such time, you know, several blockchain networks may account for a larger share of the global financial market. Um, as digital assets become more and more mainstream, uh, we are going to see them weeded out. Uh, but we are also going to see a bit more competition. Let's actually hear what Rao Paul has to say and how he compares and con contrasts, uh, you know, how both Bitcoin and Ethereum bring value to uh, the new financial system. Yeah, it's interesting when we look at the collateral layer, I, I think of, you know, Bitcoin is like this super version of US treasuries with no extra supply and gold with less supply. That's instantly transferable, exchangeable, recordable, all of that stuff. And this layer with Ethereum I think by the very function that a whole DeFi system is being based on it, it's not such pristine collateral because there's going to be claims on a lot of stuff, but that's okay. It's still high quality collateral. And I think that's the point in this. And, you know, I think calling it silver is probably a disservice, but it has the commercial aspects and the, and the other properties. I think it ends up being a larger market cap than Bitcoin potentially um, just because of the applications. That doesn't make Bitcoin less valuable. Bitcoin is kind of constrained by its 21 million, so it should be. Um, so it's, I don't know. It's very interesting. And I, I think what I don't like is this whole space fights about one versus another. It's just simply wrong. They are both in the same space playing different roles. Perfectly contrasting the differences between Bitcoin and Ethereum and the value they both bring to what we are experiencing right now. I mean, he perfectly outlines the case for Ethereum exceeding Bitcoin in market cap. He even put out a series of tweets last Friday, uh, basically presenting the argument based on this uh, from several different areas, including several sectors of global financial space that point to Ethereum being primed for greater exponential growth than Bitcoin within the next decade. He he said, end quote, his hunch is that Bitcoin is a perfect collateral layer, but Ethereum might be bigger in terms of market cap in 10 years for the reasons he mentions above. And you can see them in these tweets here. Money and collateral is just the base layer. Everything builds on top. The store of value is collateral. The trust layer and exchange of value is much bigger. He dismisses the one, chain, one blockchain to rule them all argument, insisting that different networks will carve out niches for themselves in the global business process. For Rao Paul, Ethereum is better placed to capture areas like the 1.2, get this quadrillion derivatives layer, the 70 trillion equities layer, and the 260 trillion dollar debt market. These market segments are also in addition to the tokenization potential that Ethereum offers on the existing Ethereum chain. And, and of course, you know, the already existing DeFi network that offers just so many incredible financial products right now. The future is really a super network of blockchains with the most pristine being Bitcoin and the risk curve moves out from there. Uh, any 
other outcome accruing to one winner is nothing but false hopes and dreams, said Paul in his Friday thread. I mean, with DeFi promising to be the next big thing uh, and Ethereum getting this incredible attention from institutional investors across the globe, uh, we you know, can only really expect Ethereum to do incredible things over the course of 2021 and beyond. Now, some simple technical analysis. If you were to buy and hold Ethereum today, you might see a 330% gain in the first quarter or second quarter of 2021, followed by a 766 move total. So another 400% from there. Well, that's all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for dropping in. Please leave a comment below if you guys have any ideas, if I missed anything, or if you just want to say hello.